A thing to do with the Tamura that I've never really gone through explicitly is Remainder Theorem. Um, so this is quite a useful little theorem to, to shortcut some Tamura questions in the same way that like a trinomial expansion shortcuts some questions. I know I've got a video on that, uh, which is quite helpful to people. But before I start, um, Jackie Tylo, who some of you might know from making some papers that I've gone through on this channel. Um, she has a website, which I've linked in the description below, which has all of her resources in one place and her contact details and things like that. And she also does some things for for Matt and Step, so worth checking out, it's in the description below. Otherwise, let's start Remainder Theorem. I'm going to start this in a, in a bit of a weird place. Um, most people like Pythagoras. I don't like Pythagoras. I think it's dumb. Um, and I, and I, 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 yeah, I, I just think it's dumb. The reason that I think Pythagoras is dumb is because it's not really a theorem on its own. I mean, it is, but it's also not really one. Because all Pythagoras is, is just a very special case of cosine rule. Right, and, and you can go ahead and then say cosine rule is a special case of some other stuff. But listen, cosine rule is just better, right? All Pythagoras is, just going back to this, is cosine rule when the angle is 90, because then cos 90 is zero and it makes this entire term go away. And boom, you end up with Pythagoras. But like cosine rule is the thing that you should probably know, right? Like it's just much more applicable because it works on every triangle rather than just a very select few triangles. And remainder theorem, is actually the same thing as this. It's, it, it works in the same ballpark as what I've just described. Because when you do year 12 maths, you learn factor theorem, which is if f of a equals zero, then x minus a is a factor of f of x. Um, factor theorem actually works both ways. Uh, this is just an example. There's a function. Um, it's saying if f of two is zero, then that means x minus two is a factor. And you can break f of x into some other polynomial times x minus two, right? And we could, we could find what these other things are by either doing polynomial division if we're feeling blasphemous or just by spotting the coefficients uh, but it doesn't really matter it's worth saying at this point as well that factor theorem works both ways in that typically at a level you learn this but it also if x minus a is a factor then f of a equals zero is another thing you can say this is a necessary and sufficient statement just tying this into some other things in Tamura um, because the statement works both ways it makes it necessary and sufficient that's kind of the definition of the two things anyway um, factor theorem is dumb because, okay, so we we start with this, we can just say that. Um, now, what does it mean to be a factor? Well, it means that you divide with remainder zero, right? Like six is a factor of 12 because 12 divided by six is a number with remainder zero. It's two remainder zero, so it's just two. Um, so this is another way of rewriting factor theorem. But let me introduce you to remainder theorem. A remainder theorem is this, except it allows you to do anything you want with these two zeros. So the remainder theorem says, if x minus a divides f of x to remainder b, then f of a equals b. It's just a more powerful version of factor theorem. It's the same cosine rule Pythagoras situation, where factor theorem is just the very special case where you have zeros here. Remainder theorem is actually just saying, no, nah, you're allowed to do this whenever you like with any number here that you want, right? And that makes it much more powerful. It also works both ways around exactly the same way the factor theorem does. So let's do some questions where our remainder theorem is going to come in handy, right? Um, I don't know why I wrote it out twice again there, because I wrote it on the previous slide. So yeah, cool. So you have a function here, and it says find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 2. Now you could get out some polynomial division here and actually find the remainder at the end of all that. Or you could just use remainder theorem that says if you are dividing by x minus 2, then the remainder is whatever happens when you evaluate f of 2. So I'm just going to evaluate f of 2, which gives me this, which is the remainder, which I hope you'll probably agree is a slightly faster and slightly quicker way and more efficient way of getting that question done. So let's look at some actual Tamura questions where this would have come in handy then. Um, so it says when this is multiplied by this and there is other products divided by this, the remainder is this. So we can immediately see where remainder theorem is going to come in. Now, it wants us to modify this and this first. I can't be bothered to do that because, because who can? Let's just call this P of X because it's a product of two other things. I, I don't know. I probably shouldn't have called it this because there's a P here, but I don't care. So we're going to modify these two things, except we're not really because I don't want to. This is a polynomial, despite the fact that it's factorized. It doesn't matter. This is a polynomial. When it's divided by X plus 1, the remainder is 24. That means when I evaluate this factorized polynomial at minus 1, I should get 24. So all I have to do is shove in minus ones in these x's, uh, which makes this, because x squared is still plus one, right? And then this is a minus one, that makes a minus. And it should equal 24. Um, now this here makes a minus eight, and then I can cross out all these minuses and divide by eight, 
and I'll end up with P is two very quickly. And it's quite a fast um, way of doing that question, uh, quite an efficient way of doing it. So this is well worth bearing in mind. I don't actually think this is a proper two-mill question. I think this was from some other place in my files, but it doesn't really matter. We have f of x is divided by x plus 2, the remainder of 7. So that means f of minus 2 equals 7. So let's just put in minus 2s and equals 7. That's going to give us what looks like half of a simultaneous equation. Well, that's great because here's the other half coming, right? f of 1 equals 4. Um, so let's put in 1s and say that equals 4. We get this. And then, of course, this means a is minus b or b is minus a which makes this 4a plus 2a equals 12, so 6a equals 12, so a is 2, and then b is minus 2, and we should be good to go. Um, so here's another two-mill question. A polynomial has the property that p of 1 equals 2. Now remember, this means, well, this is, I think, remainder theorem backwards. If p of 1 equals 2, that means when you take x minus 1, or when you divide by x minus 1, you get remainder 2, right? That's just... This is just very sneaky here, but that is just remainder theorem um, backwards there, which means, okay, well, if I divide all of this by x minus 1, p of x divided by x minus 1 makes something with remainder 2, so that looks perfect, and we can underline it straight away, and we'll get the answer pretty much instantly by using remainder theorem. And here's the last one that we'll do in this video. Um, so we can see some stuff is going on here that I don't really care about. This is divided by x plus 2 with remainder r. Perfect. So remainder theorem seems to be activated. We'll shove in minus 2 into all of these bits here, and we'll get r, because that's what it says we'll get. Um, I guess we can tidy that up a bit, although I guess I didn't bother. Uh, we can shove in minus 3, and we'll get s, um, so that gets this. And then it's talking about r minus s. Let's do r minus s. Let's just do taking away in a column, right? So this minus this is, I think, 19. That minus that is minus 5a. That minus that is b, and then c's go away. So r minus s is just this. What's the largest possible value of that? Well, I couldn't be bothered to read this line earlier, so let's actually read it. A, B, and C are supposed to take 1, 2, or 3. So if I want to make R on my S as big as possible, I want to take away as little as possible, so let's make A 1, and then add in as much as possible, so let's make B 3, um, and, uh, and then we can evaluate 19 minus 5 is 14, plus 3 is 17, and I think that should be that done. Hopefully that comes in handy, and do check out Jacqueline's website.